previous lap and he's gone into second place. He will feel that he's got the pace over Gardner this weekend, won't he? Yeah, it didn't look like Remy had the speed to match Sam or Raul through. And when the lights go out, the Dutch TT in Moto2 is underway. And can Sam Lowe from the inside get a decent start? That's not too bad at all. As Aaron Canet fires it through from the second row of the grid, it's a Big start for Cadet because he's going to take over and Fernandez is forced out wide and it's Cadet leading from Gardner and then it's Sam Lowe's in third place ahead of Raul Fernandez. You wouldn't have seen that or predicted it before this race got underway. A brilliant start from Adam Cadet from row two though. Yeah, really impressive from Cadet. He had a real good drive on the run down to turn one. That was Ben there just getting tagged by Navarro. Oh, oh and that's down for Dalaporta who had his best grid start in Moto2. He was just tagged. It all got tight in the shrub and, and down he goes can it leads them through into the ruskin hook for the first time in second place remy gardner is dull at oh oh and that's a big crash big crash it's marcel schrotter is it no, it's, it's tony Arbolino. Arbolino. tony Arbolino, isn't it the number 14. wow what an opening lap we've had already in moto 2 opening couple of corners sam lowe's has made it through in the meantime into second place on remy gardner now can it? What can he do uh, from here? Actually, his pace was decent this weekend. He was really good in the wet, but in warm-up, had a spill. Yes, can it struggled a bit on Friday. He really found something on Saturday. Impressive qualifying, great first lap. And we know the race rhythm he had in Saxon Ring, but I'm really impressed with this first lap from Sam Lowe's. It wasn't a great start. The front did pop up, but he was so aggressive in those first few turns, and it looks like he wants to take the lead here straight away. He's sizing up, can it? And he is into the chicane for the first time, and Sam Lowe's is going to lead them across the line in the Dutch TT. A first lap he couldn't have dreamed of overnight, but he is going to lead them through down to turn one for the second time. Sam Lowe's Canet goes past him on the brakes on that Moscosco road bike. So Canet reclaims the lead. There's Abolino still. That's at turn seven. Massive, massive crash always in there. Uh, yellow flags may well still be there when we get there on this occasion. Oh, squirt up the inside from was that Gardner? Gardner, Gardner. Was, yeah, impressive stuff there. So Sam's exit from the chicane was compromised. Can't can pounce it. Ayagura through on Ron Fernandez. Ayagura through on his former Moto3 sparring partner. And Fernandez, love the Raul variety, is having a, a shocking start to the race because Augusto was attacking him then on the outside. He's hung on to fifth place, I believe, as yeah. they went into the Ruskin. Oh, oh, no, he's out wide. And that's Fernandez dropping even further back down. He's had an awful start. Got a little bit rattled, hasn't he, at the beginning of this race. And the pole man, the favourite for the race, has dropped right back as Gardner, his title rival, takes over at the front. What a lap from Remy Gardner. Raul toughed it out a little bit up into turn six and seven, run off the track, and he's been shuffled all the way back as his teammate moves to the front of the field. Wow, what an opening couple of laps in the Dutch team. T, the pole man, Raul Fernandez, has dropped right back down the field into ninth place. This is the uh, start where team people sat up. Navarro there just had a little wobble, didn't he? Yeah, it started from Ben Schneider in a bit of a moment. Navarro almost hit the back of him. Then it kind of condenses, and you watch Delaporta coming into the shot now alongside Navarro in the rear. Oh, he touched first. Then that step out of the machine and down he goes. Lucky to be in the middle of the pack and not get collected by another machine. Yeah, thankfully, thankfully. That's the uh, main thing, that uh, he is OK and he's walked away from that one. Big wheelie for Marco Bezecchi. He's down in 13th place in this race. Fastest rider out on circuit is 7th place rider Xavi Vierge. So keep an eye on him. This is not the Moto2 race we're expecting as Sam Lowe's goes through just where Remy Garner did it on him the previous lap. And he's gone into second place. He will feel that he's got the pace over Gardner this weekend, won't he? Yeah, it didn't look like Remy had the speed to match Sam or Raul throughout practice. But then when it counts, when those lights mm. go out, Remy sets the fastest lap of the race so far at a 37.8. They're still a long way from what they're capable of. Oh, there's been a jump start. I thought Ben Snyder had moved a long way forward. He started 12th. He was in the battle for the whole shot, wasn't it? Yeah, he was and actually just behind Sam Lowe's entering turn one. A double long lap penalty. Oh, that's disastrous for the Dutch rider in front of his home fans. And he's been doing so well, actually, all weekend. As Ayagura now looking racy. This is another rookie, I will remind you, ladies and gentlemen. Ayagura has oh, had someone sliding out. And it looks like the other, it's Joe Roberts, the other Ital Trans bike has gone down, knew he had to take a long lap penalty, but both Italtrans bikes are out of this race in the early stages. Wow.
and Remy Gardner is stretching them out at the front. This is similar to what he tried at the Saxon ring. He's trying to break the field. Yeah, he did exactly that in the Saxon ring. Really put the hammer down, pushed hard for two, three laps, and then kind of rolled off, settled and didn't overload those tyres. Augusto Fernandez is up into third place, and can it also coming through on Ayagura. So Fernandez, winner here, the last time we had a Dutch TT in Moto2. Uh, he is up into third, the best we've seen from him so far this season for the last couple of seasons really as we go on board with Raul Fernandez he's battling for seventh place he gets it from Xavi Vierge but not the start Fernandez would have wanted it all and if things stayed the same in this race he'd be losing big points to Remy Garner out front but I do feel like this race is not going to be decided in these first few laps no this is a real test of Raul Fernandez how he keeps his composure oh. did she and clean Decisive move there on Bier. Hey, that's not an easy one to pull off as clean as that when you've got bikes all around you. Yeah, I, it's just because they've gone for the softer tyre. New uh, surface here this weekend, which means great, extra grip, but it can mean it's got a little bit of abrasion to it, which means towards the latter stages that soft tyre will start complaining as Raul Fernandez lines up another move. This time it's on Marcel Schrott, whose teammate Arbolino dropped out through there early on in the race. On the green for Raul Fernandez as he came out of the second mile, but he hangs on to the spot. That was a nice bit of camera work as we flicked between the two onboard cameras from Marcel Schroeder back to Raul Fernandez. You've seen how Raul set up that direction change through the past six and seven and then stuck it up the inside nice and clean. But he did run onto the green. He needs to be careful. That's the first one of the race that I've seen so far. They may well, because he's run on the green, it was after he'd taken the place. If you if you run over the green and take somebody while doing it, sometimes they will say to you, go back a spot. Sam Lowe's has made really good progress on this lap. The gap was at half a second. He's closed it right down. As we right now on board with Remy Gardner, you can see that big number 22 right up the exhaust pipes of Remy Gardner. But he's closed the gap down and actually has just set the fastest lap of the race so far. A 137.2 from Sam Lowe's as Raul Fernandez picks up another spot. He's going to run it wide though. Nagura is going to make him go even wider as he drops back into fifth. This is the problem. This is what's happened to Sam Lowe's in races this year, isn't it? If you get back there, you get duffed up. Yeah, I wouldn't have seen a lot of Ralph so far this season, but they have a lot of history in Motor 3 together. So I'm not giving up the spot to the man who has been setting all the headlines in Motor 2 this season. Raul, he's definitely determined to get through as quick as possible, but you can lose time here. And you can see with Sam and Remy, they're stretching that gap. Oh, actually, for me, Augusto Fernandez has got the speed to get back across to these two. I think so. I think you're absolutely right there. Uh, Remy Gardner, we know his pace will come late on in the race, and he will be trying to manage things. As again, Raul Fernandez makes that move up to the second mile. Is he going to run off track this time? Not on that occasion. Ogura did really well to make sure he had the drive. Oh, but again, Fernandez is going to run him wide at turn nine in the fourth corner he really let off the brakes there didn't he to go through on Agura has he got the line into the double apex right Agura's not going to uh, die wondering is he here he's going to attack again surely yeah he looks racy today I, he's definitely not given Raul an easy time he's fighting back every single time that was a late decision to move up the inside and to, to bolt but he didn't run too wide it hasn't cost him a lot of time and now he's made that decisive pass on Ayagura Brilliant Moto2 racing the only laps, and here comes Sam Lowe's now. Lined it up on the previous go around, and for an, oh, Remy Gardner, they get tight on the exit from the chicane. Didn't want to give up position, Augusto. and it's going to be Augusto Fernandez who takes over at the front. It's like a Moto3 race here in the intermediate class. It's Augusto Fernandez, not Raul, who is leading this race from his teammate Sam Lowe's, with Remy Gardner now back in third. And I do feel like they both, both the Mike BDS riders, had more pace than Gardner in these early stages. Augusto set the fastest lap of the race on that time around 37-1, so he was making his way across. That move from Sam just compromised both. Really. He's, he's a big part of it. As we watch, we're on board with Remy Gardner through the fast sector, Michael. He was setting that up, but actually it cost him a little bit, almost too close to the rear wheel as he went through the fast turn 12, but here you can see this as he sets up the run and straight up the inside, nice and clean. Into the chicane, Remy Gardner takes second place from Augusto Fernandez, but Fernandez will have a good run down towards turn one. Remy Gardner tries to close it off from him. He's given Sam Lowe a little whisper, perhaps, of getting onto the podium here. But it's Gardner who hangs on to second place behind his teammate. Absolutely a damage limitation exercise now with his teammate out in front. And that's the best he could do. If he could only lose five points to Raul Fernandez. Look at that as regards the championship. It'd be 31 points, but Augusto wants to get into second ahead of Remy Gardner, who goes tight in the strubbing.
Sam Lowe's back to a 37-0 on that lap, so brought himself back onto the rear wheel of these two. This podium is not decided yet. You can see how hungry Augusta was in sector one, trying to set something up. He's going to stick it under Remy Gardner pretty well. It could be this, this change of into direction. The, into the right, perhaps, maybe out of turn seven. Is it going to be into the second ball on this occasion? No. Sam Lowe's ready to pick up the pieces. Can he conjure up his own move? Maybe on the run to the line, because he's been strong there every single lap. And maybe into the chicane, he can take a spot. It's Gardner in second. Augusto Fernandez in third. It's Sam Lowe's in fourth. Raul is surely going to win this race and take his third victory of, I remind you, his rookie season in Moto2. Lowe's might have just gone a little bit deep in the double apex right there. Here we go then, run to the line for the final time. Raul Fernandez is surely going to win this race, barring a massive mistake on the run to the line. And Remy Gardner has covered off any move from Augusto Fernandez. He's going to take his eighth podium of the season, but it's his teammate, Raul Fernandez, who has done it again. Raul wins in Holland his third victory of the season from pole position, but he's done it the hard way. He wins, Gardner takes second in the championship. The lead is closed ever so slightly. Augusto Fernandez takes third place. So for Augusto, that's his first.